delete what's there already. And let's go ahead and press Apple G. Let's select programmer Dan Vercade and see what happens. Press return. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. Dan Vercade, Clear Night Software, 51 Bowen Road, near the high school, Paris, California, 92571, Dear Mr. Vercade. We now have an easy way of inserting an address into a word processor file. Let's see what happens when we select a different name. Steve Bevel. You see, in this case, there are only three lines to his address. He did not have a company name or a second address, and so they were simply left out instead of messing up the formatting, as might have occurred if there were simply blank lines there. So you can see the information that we have in the database can easily be transferred into the word processor, allowing us to define addresses with a very few keystrokes. In this new version of AppleWorks, we've enhanced the mail merge in two distinct ways. First of all, we've eliminated the old method of using clipboard information. This was rather tedious and required an extra step before any mail merge information could be defined or accessed. Since you had to place database information on the clipboard in one step, then switch to the word processor and make the merge. Now we simply merge directly from a database file after a one-time definition. Let's show you how this is done using the same files that we used for our word processor glossary. As you recall, we had several addresses in the database. Pressing Apple A in the word processor, we're going to move down to option 9, mail merge file. Selecting that, we choose the addresses file, and we look at item 10, says reformat during merge. That's the second new feature. That is, you can choose to not have AppleWorks reformat the document during a merge. What this means is, if a word processor line is going to be too long and be reformatted and wrap around, it will simply truncate the database information. If it's too short and would be shortened and pull information from another line, it pads the database category to keep it at a fixed length. This allows us to fill in forms with the database merge so that the information always appears at the same place on the page regardless of how long or how short each category actually is. Normal mail merging with reformatting is especially useful for creating form letters in which information must be reformatted to match the varying lengths. Forms generation, however, must always use fixed length database categories or the information will not appear where you expect. Let's take a look at how this works. We've defined an address file, so all we have to do now is escape back into our word processor document. Let's put in some mail merge information. Dear, and now let's put the name in. As usual, we press Open Apple O followed by MM for mail merge, just as before. However, this time the categories appear at a list on the screen. Cursoring down, we decide we want the first name. Omit line when all entries are blank, we'll say yes. And we now escape back out. You'll see the diamond-shaped indicator for mail merge. This is a new feature in 4.0, just making it a little easier to spot. So we now have a mail merge definition. Let's type in a little bit of information. I trust you'll enjoy using AppleWorks 4.0 on a daily dialy. Yes, even hourly basis. Yours sincerely, Randy Brandt. Well, we might want to have a little more information in here, so let's put something else at the top. Let's put in, uh, just for a sample, let's put in the company name. Okay, we now have two sample entries. We're using the same information that we used for the glossary, and of course these are two different approaches. If you're simply writing one letter, the glossary would be the handy way to do it, since you could extract the information quickly. Of course, if you're writing a letter to everybody in your database, it would be much more efficient to use mail merge and allow AppleWorks in one step to print all of the letters for you. Also, one of the exciting features of mail merge under this version of AppleWorks is that it respects the record selection rules found in the database. So, if you wanted to print to a subset, for example, all of the people who live in a certain state, you could simply set the record selection rules in the database move to the word processor file and print. It would automatically print letters to only those people in the states which you had selected according to the Open Apple R record selection rules in the database. Alright, let's go ahead and see our example. 
We're going to print to a text file on disk in order to al allow you to easily see how this works. Pressing return on text file, we choose standard text format with tabs. A new feature appears at this point. The merged database file name is displayed at the top of the screen, followed by the reformat status, yes or no. Yes, of course, would be used for form letters. No would be used for filling out fixed forms. Merge database items is the uh, standard option. We press return. Now we need a file name. We'll call this merge test. Press return, and it prints. Using the new feature of AppleWorks we demonstrated some time back, we'll go to Add Files and load in this text file directly. Scrolling down, we find Merge Test. Press Return. The first one was a merge to me. Dear Randall, I trust you'll enjoy using AppleWorks. Sincerely, Randy Brandt. I'm writing to myself again. Perhaps that should be investigated. Now, the second item was Joe Gleason. We have Dear Joseph. I trust you'll enjoy using AppleWorks. The third merge was to ClearNight Software. Dear Daniel, I trust you'll enjoy using AppleWorks. And finally, Steve Bevel, our beta tester. Dear Steven, I trust you'll enjoy using AppleWorks. So you can see with a very simple process, we defined a mail merge file and the information was plugged into the database. One of my personal favorite features in the word processor is the split window. Simply pressing a keystroke divides the window, allowing us to get two different views into a document. In this sample file we're scrolling through, we see the word ultra macros. I'd like to refer back to that later, so I'm just going to put the cursor right there, press Apple W, and you can see that there's a dividing line on the screen. Above the dividing line, the text is frozen. Think of it as titles, like in the spreadsheet or database. I can now scroll up and down, use AppleWorks features normally, but the information I had in the top window is there fixed until I leave the word processor file. At this point, I may decide that I've seen what I need to see and I can refer back to a normal window, allowing me to see 20 lines at a time instead of merely 9 or 10. So I press Apple W with the cursor on the word AND. You'll notice that that word remains in the same relative position in the new window as it did in the partial window, and the prior information is erased. Another handy feature in the word processor is quite simple and yet very powerful. Pressing Open Apple Return when selecting Find or Replace will limit the Find or Replace to whole words instead of partial matches. Allow me to demonstrate. I want to find the word Fonts. If I press Apple F, press Return on Find Text, and type in Font, you see Super Fonts is highlighted in that line. I press Yes to move to the next one. Again, it's Super Fonts. Again, I finally get to the word Fonts that I was searching for all along. Let's back up back to the top of the file. I press open Apple F again, but this time I press Apple Return or Apple T to limit my find to a specific word. Although the word is font, let's add an S on the end since we actually want to find the word fonts and we're no longer allowed partial finds with the find word option. Pressing Return, we jump instantly to fonts are cool, skipping super fonts and super fonts. As you can see, this can be a very powerful feature, especially when replacing since it ensures that when you replace a word, you will not get false replacements on partial words causing your document to be messed up. 4.0 Word Processor has another nice little feature which is not all that significant and yet can be very handy. What I'm talking about are the new mouse text codes for formatting options. Before, you always had a caret and you had to look at the bottom line to know what exactly the code was. Well, now we have some visual clues. For example, let's press Control L on both sides of the word R. As you know, Control L inserts underline codes. Well, rather than a caret, we have the little mouse text 